Hi there, uh, my name's Chris. I'm a beekeeper from the southern part of New Zealand and I'm on a journey. I've gone from uh, doing a day job, teaching on a degree course, to deciding to become a full-time beekeeper. Hopefully you'll enjoy following along with me as I work my way from having just 40 odd hives to having enough hives and enough bees to make a living over the next year or so. I think you might enjoy watching it because uh, success is not guaranteed. So now we've got a grafting frame in here. I wonder how many bees are still in here. There'll be a few, I'm sure. Yep, too many, but uh, I wonder if I can get that frame out. Close the lid, keep as many bees in there as I can. I'll go outside and shoot these off. about but the fewer the better. So this is my setup. So before I start filming this I just want to reiterate that I'm not an expert at this I've not done that many and more to the point I haven't done any since last summer so this is getting to know how to do it again, all over. Now I have prepared a couple of bars full of Jay-Z, BZ cells. I've got, got an array of different grafting type tools here. So I've got little grafting things, I've got brushes and I've got Chinese grafting tools. Off camera I'm going to have a fiddle around with all of the different types but um, last year I found the Chinese grafting tool was the best. Everybody's a wee bit different I suppose. I also use the, these things here so I can see what's going on. First egg for the year done, first larva for the year done. So picking them up is the bit that I find the hardest. Oh, there's a bee emerging from a cell. Half a squash larva. This is quite cool in here. As you can see, it's hard to see anything in the bottom of those cells. So now I'll get the frame, insert those bars into it.
and then out to the hive and we'll drop it in. So, realistically, if I can get a 50% take on my first graft for the season, I'll be quite happy. So a couple of days ago I took a full frame out of this hive, replaced it with an empty frame where the graft's going to go. In fact, empty as in it's just got a starter strip in it. And it's interesting to see that these bees packed in here like this are busy festooning getting ready to draw wax on this frame. So, sorry girls, all that work that you've started is gonna to come to nothing because I'm gonna take you off. I'm gonna take that frame out. Now because I'm in a nuke, I've only got five frames up the top, I've got brood. I've got, gotta get this in before I spend too much time talking. Make sure those don't drop out as I roll it over. Ah, bugger. Okay, so 50% take is that estimate. It's just dropped to 25%. I'm going to carry on. It's just a first go. There's a lesson to be learned from that. I'm going to find some way to stick those in there so that that can't happen. Got a wax, something to firm them up in there so that they're more solid. So there's quite a few of those uh, cells have now got sawdust in them. We'll just uh, see how fussy the bees are about that find out soon enough it's a possibility they might clean them out and carry on or they might just ignore any cells that have got foreign matter in them so this frame here the end frame has got honey in it these two frames here and here have a chock block full of brood which means that they'll be emerging and more and more bees will be coming out over the life of the of the queen cells and this frame is packed with pollen and it's going in right next to the cells. What I should do is throw that bar away and go and graft another bar full but I'm not going to because I'm interested. I'm in a learning phase. How much difference did that fall make? That was the bottom bar. When we open it up again in a couple of days to see how many have taken we'll see if there's a marked difference between the two bars. All right, now I'm just going to go and grab a pollen patty, put it on top, put the feeder on, and then top that feeder up. This hive has got a lot of pollen in it already, and this pollen patty was made a while ago and it's starting to dry out, so I've taken the paper off it so they can access it easier. It's quite possible that they'll ignore it. Actually, I'm just going to pick it up and move it over so it's on top of the brood and not on top of the graft so that I can get that graft frame out without having to disturb it. So, <laughs> I'm sure I've said this before and I'll say it again many times, there are some experienced bee breeders who are popped into this channel to have a peek to see what this idiot's doing and they're shouting at their computers at the moment 
because of all the things I've done wrong. Not the least is dropping one of those bars on the ground and not doing anything about it, just putting it straight back in the hive. Plenty of time, and this is early enough, as I've said a number of times. food in that feeder and we're all done. That feeder was bone dry and I topped it up three days ago so they're going through it all right so I'm just going to go and grab those other two frames of brood that I brought home the one that I grafted from and uh, and the other one I'm going to pop them into those cloaks three and four down the end there just to help them build their population up have some lunch and then off to another yard to check some more bees that's it for this video no it's not I tell a lie. I'm not going to publish this video until I have looked inside this in a couple of days to see what kind of uh, take rate we've had and I'll tack that on the end so you can see. And then it's all in one video. So that'll just delay this being published by a couple of days but that's no big deal. Hope you're enjoying these videos and I'll be back shortly in two days time. But for you that'll just be a couple of seconds. It's two days since you were watching the previous part of this video and yesterday I pulled the slide out of the cloak board. It dawned on me as I was doing that that I didn't show you a cloak board close up. So here's one very exactly like the one I'm using in that hive. It's uh, homemade. It's just a piece of queen excluder put inside a wooden rim. The rim has got a slot in it that allows the slide to go in and this piece here to go in. This piece here simply closes it off. When it's like that, it's a standard queen excluder pretty much. And when I put the queen excluder in, it goes in like that. Then three days later, the slide goes in the day before the graft. And the slide is just a piece of metal. piece of sheet tin, just about anything would do, core flute, hardboard, plywood, I used tin because I had it sitting around here, it's just leftovers from making lids, and uh, that slides neatly into there like that. When I put it in, I actually lift the top box off and scoot all the bees off the queen excluder before I put it in, because uh, Otherwise, all the bees that are sitting on the queen excluder will get their heads sliced off on the way through. So while that's like that, you'll see that there's a space there and that gives you that top entrance. So when the front entrance is closed and the bees are returning, they can come up and into the hive like that. And the important part, if you are going to build your own one of those, is to make sure that it's very tightly sealed around there because the purpose of that slide is to stop the queen pheromones from the queen in the bottom box coming up and by doing that you then make the bees that are in the top box think that they're queenless. So in this hive here, the slide's out, that little block is back in, the front door is now open again, I did that yesterday when I took the slide out, the back door is now closed. So this is quite exciting. What am I going to find? Uh, I suppose there's a possibility it's a complete wipeout, in which case you'd have to ask the question, would I publish this video? And the answer is yes, I would, because uh, this is uh, documenting my journey. And if I've made a complete stuff up and it didn't work, then I will own up to it and we'll have another go. Probably don't actually need a smoker. You can see I'm using old uh, Hessian sack 
in my smoker. It's actually uh, sacks from a coffee roaster, so there are coffee beans come in them. I have a little wooden plug that I put in the nozzle when I've finished in a yard, and then I put it in a box with a lid on it, which is airtight, tacked to the back of my truck, and then it just snuffs it out, which means that I've got a nice dry piece of fuel sitting in there for starting it the next time. Sometimes it's only just enough to get it going. And I've found, I mean everyone's got their own style with smokers, but I've found that uh, if you keep puffing until you, the smoke goes white, that tells you that it's hot enough down inside to keep going and not go out on you. Uh, the most important thing I've found with a smoker is to have dry fuel. So that should sit going for ages now. I bought an extra piece of hessian because I wasn't sure what was inside the smoker, but I won't need that. And then the other important thing with a smoker is where you put it. Put it in the wrong place and you get a face full of smoke. I'll just bring that camera forward and then we'll dive back down into that hive and see what happened. Now I have not looked into this hive, so you're going to see it at the same time I am. I'll either be happy, or I'll be disappointed, or I'll shrug my shoulders and say, yeah, that's about what I expected. When I'm working hives, when I'm working hives uh, where there are going to be a lot of bees about, I wear a full suit the rest of the time. Now I'm going to have to organise my microphone. The rest of the time I just use a little half lid. I pull my top up like that. Just to stop the bees coming down through my neck, around my neck. So it's an overcast day here. It's been raining this morning, but it's starting to warm out up and the bees are just starting to fly. You don't need to tie that up. All right, let's have a look, see what's going on. This is a bit cooler. And I see those bees coming straight out at it, which means it's still very busy on top. I've got a little bit of smoke. Five sounding very busy. I'm hoping that that's not the sound of a queen this hive. I have, last year when I was doing this I did actually lose a queen during this process and I'm not 100% sure whether I squished her or what the deal was. I was in the middle of saying two days ago before I dropped that that bar and, and lost my train of thought that I've only got five frames up the top here. If I had a 10 frame I would have some empty frames in there because they do have a tendency to want to draw comb and there's a possibility they could put comb around the queen cells.
I'm just going, I'll just get my bee brush and just gently brush those off so we can see a bit better. Trying to hold the frame where you can see it, which means that some of the frame's not over the box. So I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the top bar out of 12. And on the bottom bar, the one that I dropped, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine. Seven, nine, sixteen out of twenty-four. That's a rough count. I'll know when I go to actually uh, take them out in eight or nine days that I, I'll know more accurately. And I'll go in. I'm happy with that, by the way. Uh, it's not a complete failure. What's interesting is that that bar that I drop on the ground has got more cells in it more cells that have taken than the one on the top. Now what that could be a function of, well two things, one it says to me that dropping it and having sawdust in the cells wasn't that big a deal for the bees, they were obviously okay with it, they just took the sawdust out. Um, it didn't upset the too many cells by the look of it and so therefore it's not that big a deal dropping it. doesn't mean you should drop it, <laughs> quite the opposite. but. Uh, that's a lesson learned. But the other thing too is that the bottom bar was uh, a set of cells where I'd already done a dozen before I got into the bottom bar and I think those first few that I did I was blundering around a bit and I think that uh, I was getting better at putting the cells in. Now that's not a stellar success rate by any means but for a first graft, for a novice grafter like me, I'm going to take it. So from here, like I said, in eight or nine days, I'll check the calendar, I will go in there. Best to leave them alone in the interim period because as those uh, queen cells are being drawn out and the larvae inside them are developing, they are really, really fragile and a bump at that stage can damage the queen cell, the, the larvae, the larva a larva, B larvae inside and you can uh, kill the queen. So it's best just to leave them alone from now until we get uh, ready to take them out as queen cells and put them into splits. I could put them in my incubator, let them emerge completely and then introduce them as virgin queens. I actually just find that the uh, the introducing queen cells is a lot more straightforward. You don't have to worry about the bees accepting them in the splits because they just seem to, uh, as they emerge, they get accepted. So I need to go in there and count how many cells I've got so that the day before they're ready to come out and go into the splits, I have to go and make the splits and I need to know how many I have to make. Alright, that's the end of the video. I'll close that up and then I'll walk away and leave them and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that that was interesting for you. There are lots of people out there who will leave this to professional beekeepers and that's fair enough. I'm not one of those people. I like to give things a go myself and uh, I also um, find that it's, uh, it gives me total control over the genetics. It means that I'm choosing which queens to breed from and therefore I'm developing my own line of bees 
which uh, I guess I'm a control freak. I want to, I want to be confident that any nukes or queens that I sell, any queens that I put into my own hives are going to be good queens. And if I'm controlling the process, then I'm more confident that that's going to be the case. Anyway, video is getting far too long, so enjoy your beekeeping. And if you like these videos, you know about all the things to do, you know, the buttons to push and all that stuff. And I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.